Welcome to the 700 Club. First aid, urban warfare, guerrilla tactics. Civilians in Taiwan are signing up for combat training in preparation for an invasion by China. Dozens of private companies on the island are also offering classes to develop a core of, quote, civilian warriors. George Thomas has more from Taipei, Taiwan. For Carl Kuo, China's intention to take Taiwan by military force looks and feels more real with each coming day. Turn on the news, and almost every day you hear how tensions between China and Taiwan are escalating. The 24-year-old Taipei native runs this shop in a popular market area of the city. He says Beijing's military drill simulating a total blockade of Taiwan have his family thinking about how to prepare for war. We've discussed taking basic weapons training, getting more money out of the bank, storing some food supplies, and planning a possible escape route. Many here worry that if war comes, this thriving democracy in a strategic corner of Southeast Asia will be extinguished. We don't want to lose our way of life. Taiwan is a very friendly city, very friendly island, and people are good to each other. It's a democratic society where the leader are elected, not by military force. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year sent a chill across this island nation of 23 million people, with some drawing comparisons between Putin's obsession with taking over its neighbor and Xi Jinping's determination to annex Taiwan. A popular saying among people here is, Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow. Five generations of the Communist Party leaders had or, always um, put unification as one of their priorities. Uh, they were incapable of delivering that, but Xi Jinping is a different person. And Xi Jinping um, believed that um, right now probably is the peak uh, of the Chinese power. And that's why many Taiwanese point to Ukraine's continued resistance against a much bigger invading army. The unity displayed by all Ukrainians has been inspiring to us. And it should also serve as a warning to China that they should think twice about attacking us. Polls show an overwhelming majority of people here, over 70 percent, willing to defend Taiwan against any China invasion. Taiwan has been paying very close attention ever since Russia began its military offensive against Ukraine back on February 24th. And as this island nation prepares for a potential invasion by her neighbor, China, the one thing they're focusing on, just like they did in Ukraine in the initial opening days of the war, is the idea of creating a Taiwanese civilian defense force. And that idea led to an explosion of private companies here offering defense classes to civilians. The key to the international community's intervention in the possible conflict in the Taiwan Strait is Taiwan's determination to defend itself. The war in Ukraine by Russia has confirmed such a theory. Only when the people have shown their strong determination to defend themselves and act on it can they convince the international community to help them. Record numbers are taking classes on how to provide first aid. At each session, we would ask trainees why they would attend first aid classes. Many would mention concerns about the war in Ukraine. So they start to ask themselves, I am a civilian. What can I do to help? What can I do for myself, for my family? Or what can I do for others? Others are learning urban guerrilla warfare tactics to protect their neighborhoods. Although I was enlisted for two years, I feel that what I've learned is insufficient to meet modern wars. So I found a place to train and enforce my knowledge. If one day something happens, I could probably be able to return home safe. Taiwan has only about 170,000 active soldiers. Compared to China's nearly 2 million strong army, the largest in the world. The island nation, however, has a larger, well-trained military reserve force than China, numbering about 1.5 million, in case Beijing decides to attack. Still, Taiwanese businessman Robert Cao says that's not enough. 
The tech billionaire is pouring millions of his personal wealth into training and equipping some three million civilian warriors in the next three years to defend their island home. When I was, uh, Admiral Li Si Ming, former head of Taiwan's armed forces, tells CBN News that his nation needs an immediate move toward a resilient and united society like Ukraine to face a menacing and dangerous neighbor. If you really can develop this kind of the willingness, develop this kind of capabilities, then the, the enemy, uh, the China will consider even they can destroy the or Navy and the Air Force is successfully landed on our territory. They still need to fight against our regular forces and a lot of the uh, kind of a civilian defense forces. Last week, China and Taiwan held dueling military drills as tensions continue to rise. As China deployed several dozen ships and planes to simulate sealing off the island, Taiwan's army held exercises with tanks, armored vehicles and Humvees on the southern part of the island. This all comes as Beijing claims it is ready to fight foreign interference in the region, as well as any Taiwanese attempt to gain independence. George Thomas, CBN News, Taipei, Taiwan. Well, there's an in-depth look at, at what's currently going on in Taiwan and how the population is preparing for war. And if you think that's unlikely, please think again. President Xi, the, the current head of China, has told his military to prepare for war. And he's doing that on a very quick timetable. Will what's happening in Ukraine dissuade him? Probably not. I think he's looking at it from the standpoint of Taiwan as some kind of rogue province and needs to be reunited with the, the mainland. But it looked, it ignores the history, and it certainly ignores that there are two different systems. Taiwan is a thriving democracy. You've seen incredible success there, and, and China does not enjoy that at all. And their promise from, from when they took over Hong Kong from the British, their promise was there would be one state and two solutions. Well, that promise got broken, and now Taiwan's looking at it Yes, we need to fight for our way of life. We need to fight for our democracy. And I applaud the president because he's saying, yes, we will stand with Taiwan.